Welcome back. Uh, great to see everybody. It's great to see the interest is still there. The president continues to make it very, very clear that if you want to be part of a Trump administration, you're going to be putting, serving the country, not yourself. The safety of the American people and the security of American homeland continue to be the president's top priority. His outreach to these leaders is a critical step in turning the page on the failed foreign policies of the past eight years. Notably, he did all this in the face of extreme obstructionism from Democrats in the Senate who are holding up 17 of his department or agency leads that require Senate confirmation. In contrast, 10 days into his term, President Obama had only had seven people in these positions awaiting confirmation. President Bush had all but four confirmed. If Senate Democrats think that voters are going to be okay with them continuing business as usual, dragging their heels and confirm confirming qualified nominees, they sorely misunderstood the message this November. The truth is, these cabinet members are unbelievably qualified and will all be confirmed by the Senate. And Democrats know this. So it's time to stop playing political games with the core functions of our government. Also this morning, the president signed an executive order reducing regulation and controlling regulatory costs. The order instructs the director of Office of Management Budget to issue guidelines that for every one new regulation, two existing regulations in an agency uh, be eliminated. We're calling it one in, two out. Additionally, the order states that the cost of all new regulations finalized in fiscal 2017 must be no greater than zero for each agency. This executive order will help get the economy back on track and is part of the president's bold plan to create 25 million new American jobs in the next decade. As you know, tomorrow at 8 p.m., the president will announce who he intends to nominate for the Supreme Court. Um, and for a party preaching tolerance, it's interesting to see some Democrats have already come out against this unnamed individual. I would also note that when you look not just at the ups and downs of a market, but you look at consumer confidence and a lot of the other market indicators, this, a Trump presidency brought a lot of confidence back uh, to traders, to investors, more importantly to job creators. And you look at the number of individuals, the small businesses, the large businesses, the automakers, all coming in and saying to the president, I want to be part of your effort, your agenda to make the country better, to grow jobs here, to bring jobs back here. Um, I think it's a positive sign, not just on the ups and downs of one day's market fluctuation, but the overall commitment that businesses have um, to, to want to work with this administration. The action never spoke to it, never intended to deport people. It had to do with how do we process people in and detain them until we ascertain um, whether or not they can, they could, uh, they, they sought to do us any harm. And I, I know that everyone likes to get where they want to get to as quick as possible. And I think the government did a phenomenal job of making sure that we process people through, but we did so knowing so that the people who are coming in hadn't done anything that was seeking to do us harm. All of the enforcement and action regarding the executive order is in place and it still remains right now. And, and we feel pretty confident that if there's any problems, we'll prevail. It's, it is, again, this is, this is a national security issue. These seven countries were derived from what the Obama administration had deemed as needing further travel restriction. We follow through on that, and as we continue to go through this 90-day process review, we're going to make sure that we put a system in place that vets, extreme vets, these people who are coming into our, our, country, our country that potentially could do us harm. On the NSC reorganization, um, with regards to uh, the President's chief strategist being on the NSC, that yeah. wasn't something that existed, um, certainly in, the, in President Obama's uh, tenure. Can you right. talk to what does that speak about Mr. Bannon's role within the White House, within the policy uh, decision-making structure? Well, let, let's, be, let's be honest. I mean, David Axelrod walked in and out of NSC meetings quite frequently by his own account and by several of your accounts. Uh, what this shows is that this administration is being rather transparent, that it's putting on the people on the, out in the public who's going to be going in and out of those meetings, uh, not just letting people go in willy-nilly. Um, I think it shows that this administration is trying to make sure that we don't hide things, uh, wait for them to count after the fact. Uh, so it, it recognizes the role that he's going to play. But Steve's not going to be in every meeting. Like, like Axelrod, he'll come in and out when needed. Um, but I think we wanted to be upfront about it and make sure that, that that was stated so it wasn't a story when he did. President Obama, this statement that was just referenced earlier, said that he's heartened by the level of engagement taking place in communities around the country. Does President Trump have a message for the protesters? And does he have a message for the 109 people that you just mentioned? And since it's two for Monday. Uh, on this memo about the plan to defeat ISIS, 
president campaigned and said that he had a plan to defeat ISIS, does he? Yes, he does, and he's talking to his generals to make sure that they provide him the feedback necessary to implement it. That is an ongoing conversation that he continues to have with both the Joint Chiefs, Secretary of State, designee, the Homeland Security, Secretary, and the Secretary of Defense. But he has been having that conversation within his National Security Council, within his advisors, to make sure that he has that. He has tasked the Joint Chiefs with a plan to come up with and implement some of his recommendations and some of theirs to make sure that we can defeat ISIS. So, so I'm sorry. And on the message, please, to the protesters and specifically to the families who this weekend were caught up in this. Yeah, and I, I think that it's a shame that people were inconvenienced, obviously. But at the end of the day, we're talking about a couple hours. I would rather, you know, I, I'm sorry that some folks may have had to wait a little while, but I think the president would much rather know that he's not placing a call to someone who was killed because of someone was led in this country to commit a terrorist act. Advocacy groups are saying that we already have extreme vetting. Uh, it takes anywhere to 18 to 24 months for people who are applying <coughs> for asylum or refugee status to go through that vetting process. So how do you justify making it even more extreme? And well, also, do you plan to add more countries to the list since some of the 9-11 terrorists? Yeah, countries. it's a 90-day review period. Um, and if you've got other countries, please let us know. Uh, I, again, I, I understand that. It's interesting, though, that you're talking about adding countries when I keep hearing all these questions about was it too much and too quick. I mean, you can't have it both ways. What was the reason that President Trump decided to move up his announcement from Thursday night to tomorrow night? Because he wanted to. I mean, was it, it a way? I mean, was oh, it no, no, no. This is like, flip this, you know, flip this because here. He, he, he wanted to move it up. He was ready to go. He made his, as he mentioned, on Friday, he was making his decision. He made the decision, and the president chose to, to go with it, plain and simple. Jihadist groups celebrated news of the travel ban over the weekend, indicating that they see it as a recruiting tool. Former CIA and NSA director Michael Hayden said that he believes this travel ban could make the U.S. less safe. So what do you say to those who argue this travel ban will make the country less safe? Okay, let's, let's go back and look at what it is. Seven countries that the Obama administration had already identified needed further travel restrictions. I was asking about the rollout as well. Did Secretary Kelly find out about the executive order as it was being signed, and did Secretary Mattis find out only hours now, I, look, I, What I'm going to tell you is what, what has been briefed out previously, which is that all appropriate agencies and, and individuals that were needed to be part of the process were. Everybody was kept in the loop at the level necessary to make sure that we rolled it out properly. Respond to the former president? On, on that note, um, and how, how much how well were those departments briefed? I mean, you just said yourself that the president is willing to act very quickly when he has right. to to keep the country safe. And so is there a lesson to be learned from what happened last week in terms of maybe uh, better preparing the departments that are relevant? Well, again, let, let's, to but, but you, right. Concerned? I understand the question that you're asking, but there's two things that, that have to get cleared up. One is if we announced this a lot earlier, it would have given people plenty of time to flood into the country who could have done us harm. That, that's not exactly a sound strategy. Right? So the people that needed to be kept in the loop were kept in the loop. The people that needed to be briefed were. It, the system actually worked really well. I mean, that's the takeaway from this, that the system worked well, the country is safer for it. The, the president has a very clear vision. He's been clear on it since the campaign. He's been clear on it since taking office. He's going to put the safety of this country first. He's going to implement things that, that are in the best interest of protecting this country prospectively, not reactively. And if somebody has a problem with that agenda, then, then they should. Then you know that. Then that does call into question whether or not they should continue in that post or not. But the president was was elected, and I think again, look at the polls that have come out so far. The American people support what the president's doing. Everyone in here needs to get out of Washington once in a while and go talk to people throughout America that are pleased that this president is taking the steps necessary to protect this country. And so I, I do look. I I, I know I, I know the president appreciates the people who serve this nation. Um, and, the, and the public servants, but at some point, if they have a big problem with the policies that he's instituting to keep the country safe, then that's up to them to question whether or not they want to stay or not. But I, I do think that, again, you got to remember the goal of what the president's doing. The president has a right to have his nominees taken up. That is part of, and, and so for them, it is going, to, it, the, the default used to be unless qualified, confirmed, and it is now going to always know. And I think that's a pretty sad message. I think if you're a Senate Democrat, you've got to wonder or not whether or not you're getting outside of, of Washington. Enough. Thank you guys very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Respond to President Obama. President Obama.